<laughs> okay. We're good? Is that better? Now I'll get back into it. I'm like just saying broadcast interrupted. Alright, yeah, we're good now. Alright, All right. get out of there. Hey, we're back, and hopefully that we're everything good. The shot okay? Clover? Alright, again. Thanks for joining us for another virtual happy hour. We're going to be going over sake, something that is very important to me. And I'm so excited to share with you the knowledge that I have. Uh, just so you know, uh, sorry about that. But hey, we're back. We're rocking and rolling. Again, we aren't doing any hard liquor or anything today. But be sure to go check out Ranch House Spirits for any of your spirit needs over on 202 East Broadway, Cuero, Texas, 77954. So, Nihonshu, what should we know as sake? If we were to go into a bar or into a place in Japan and be like, Really excited to be there, but hey, we want some sake. Chances are they would just give us like maybe something referred to as shochu or just some whiskey or something because sake really just means alcohol. But we know about, uh, know what sake is in America is actually referred to as Nihon Shu, which means Nihon means Japan, Shu means alcohol, so alcohol from Japan, J J Japanese alcohol, land of the rising sun's booze. So, People refer to it as rice wine. It is actually more relative to beer in the brewing process. It is brewed, uh, but when you watch how the entire process happens and all the steps it takes, it's actually not similar to either in any way, except for, again, maybe some brewing technique in the sense that yeast is brewing the, the, the maromi, or what we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So yeah, so sake is a very special thing. It's all on its own. And we're going to go ahead and dive right into it now, now that we are not sideways. So sake that y'all all know about in your local sushi restaurants, and everything, that's preferred to, that's something, a table sake. That's going to be a lower grade sake. That is nothing wrong drinking that whatsoever. If that's all you can get, I'd rather you be drinking that than not drinking sake at all. Uh, it's a brand known as Gekikon for the most part. It is made in America and it is made with, you know, not, maybe not the best rice that can be harvested that due to a Japanese sake or anything. So that's what you're most familiar with. We're going to go way out of that spectrum. But we do have a bottle of Gekikon, Morgan, that is, we're doing something fun with it. He's going to grab it real quick. And that's something that, that, that Gekikon that we're about to show you the bottle of, it's actually referred to as Futushu. Futushu is table sake. And again, Futushu doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it is a certain process to make it. It's about making a bunch of yield, keeping the price down for the guests. So we decided to get some Gekikon and we are spiking a watermelon with it. So we'll see how this goes. Start the process today. It's going to be good. We'll let you know how this goes. We're probably going to do another video of us cutting into this and putting it on the YouTube channel. There you go. So that is table sake. That's typically what you drink at your sushi restaurants. So let's go ahead and step it up a notch. Matter of fact, if you look over here, there's a bunch of different bottles, all different types of sake. Some of them are similar, but every brewery and every bottle is so unique in their own way. I'm going to start clearing some of this off. I have bottles everywhere. It's something from, so, but I just want to see what we're going to be going through. And I figured that we start off with, this is a cool one. This is called a Junmai. This is a Junmai as well. This is going to be, as you can see, this is a very big bottle a Kiku. And it's going to, uh, so to be a Junmai, Junmai in Japanese means pure rice. Jun means pure, Mai means rice. And this is pretty much the example of what you need to make a proper sake, which is going to be rice, water, yeast, and koji mold. So the reason that you need those, the reason that you need the koji mold is because of the process that you put the rice through, rice polishing, or in, it referred to in the industry as semi-buai, you polish away the rice. So when you see brown rice, it is every piece of rice that you see from sake rice to your table rice, all of it's polished. That's why it's white. So, but the more you take away from the, the grain of rice, the they're gonna take away something called the germ. And if the germ can't get to the center of the rice, where which is starch, to convert it into sugar, you have to introduce something else to convince, convince, could, convince? Yeah, convince that sugar that, uh, convince that starch that it wants to be sugar so the yeast can eat it and turn it into stuff. But anyways, four ingredients, that's what's going on here. And we're gonna go ahead and crack open, we'll do this one. May I please have a wine glass? Got a shout out from Wiley Barber. Hey Wiley, how's it going my man? 
He says it's the skipper's salute. Indeed. Yes, indeed we do. So sake, y'all might be used to it being served in little cups. I have some in the on the drying rack in the dish pit. So those are what y'all would serve, think. People think that sake should be drank in shots. That is not the case. Drink it as you will, but don't sake bombs. Y'all are better than that. You don't need sake bombs. Just drink, just get a nice bottle of sake. And I'm gonna, again, guide you through this entire experience. We're gonna talk about it. And we're going to, uh, you know, figure out why sake is more than just dumping it into a terrible beer and then banging it on a table and just uh, being completely inappropriate and just chugging this weird, bad sake, bad beer thing. So this is a Junmai. So in serving in wine, sake is typically stronger than your average wine, so you'll be less of a pour. Thanks, sir. You can see those uh, other ones too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, you might see it something like this. You will never. You probably won't see it like this in a uh, restaurant because this is one of my, from my pr private collection. But this is uh, what you would, a sake glass or uh, choco is what you would call it in Japanese. Yeah. So the Junmai, pure rice. The polishing rate on a Junmai is probably going to be around 70%. And 70% of the polish rate that I was telling you about. So if you think about the white rice that you eat at home, it has to be polished to get to that point. And so the more you polish it, the lower the number in polishing rate is going to be. The lower the number in polishing rate means the less, hey, sir, proteins, amino acids, and and more st and, and then closer to the center of the rice which is the core which has all that starch that we want to convert to sugar that's all when you get all that away from there you're going to take away a lot of these bold robust flavors and you get to where it's more delicate so if you see what this is i would imagine it's 70 percent doesn't necessarily say on the bottle i would imagine it's 70 percent though that's it that's that's the run of the mill for, for just a basic junmai So this is going to have some pretty big flavors. A lot of umami. Umami is a flavor profile that, that has been added to the flavor chart. A lot of people think that when you eat your favorite food, you don't know, can't put your finger on what that savory note is, or you like, there's just something special about it. Chances are it's umami, which is an amino acid, which you're, what you're getting on your palate. Junmais typically have a tremendous amount of umami. So let's check it out. Yeah. So on the nose, it is definitely going to be ripe. It is going to have a soy to it and I mean that in the best of ways and it is going to have some creams it has a lot going on I, I do something really weird when I, when I drink mine I try to aerate it I recommend you do it at home don't don't just drink it like nobody's watching when you get everything you can out of it give it a nice swirl drink your sake out of a wine glass aerate it right all right, guys. Yeah. Getting like yogurt, yogurt, a um, little bit of uh, baking spice, and maybe some ripe fruits in there as well. Some apple, some green apples in there. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this to the side. You want to take that away? Somebody Price says they take the hat. Thanks, Herbie. It's good to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Hope that everybody's treating you well and you're making some money up there in lockdown in Austin. So, Herbie, if you just tuned in, we just did Tozai right here at Junmai. So, this is going to be the most affordable bottle that you can find that's above GekeCon. GekeCon, that I were talking about earlier, you can get that bottle for ten bucks, maybe even less. Again, if that's all you. If that's if you like it, go for it. If you like your sake warm. Go for it. We're going to talk about warm sakes as well. There is definitely a time and place for sakes and types of sakes that you want to drink warm. This Junmai, actually, that we tried, it we probably would go really nice warm, and you can just warm it up in a water bath. And so I say from there, we keep on moving. We'll do another Junmai. I need another wine glass, sir. And these big bottles are really great for... Uh, Obviously, having in parties, serving in bars. So, like, you could take this and you would take something called a tokiri. And will you hand me one of those? You, I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. A tokiri, 
what you simply you would do this. You know, if you want a party you wanted to get some sake and you, they didn't necessarily want to have a whole bottle, but they just want a carafe, this is a great one to do in it. Matt, he has served you just serve your sake carafe with some sake cups, and that's it. So Clover wants to try that out while I turn it back. So that first one had a tremendous amount of umami. And these crafts are really great because it helps it open up. But the temperature changing in sake is extremely important. These are chilled. These are about uh, 50 degrees, maybe a little bit lower on some of these bottles. I do have them on ice now, so I anticipate them dropping to about 48 degrees by the time we really get to them. So sake is extremely delicate in the sense when you compare it to a wine, it's going to have a lot more nuance. Well, they both, that, that is, I don't want to disrespect wine by any means, but sake, when it warms up, even by like, you never want to hold your glass by the, the bulb because you're heating, heating it up. And by every, when you heat it up, it's changing the flavors so much but jumais can handle warmer like warmer temperatures really well again even to the point where if you want to drink it warm so two different jumais this one is much more delicate on the nose it is going to uh it's probably i don't know the polishing rate on this one which is definitely important so i could say this had probably this might actually be a 72 maybe a little bit lower and so if it's 70 percent, that means that 30 70 percent of the rice remains Keep that in mind because when we start going through these bottles, we're going to keep on talking about these polishing rates because it is like really important for why these bottles are so much different and like what makes a bottle cheaper, or more expensive, and why they're, the flavors are so different. Why a bottle like Gekikon, the Futu Shu we talked about earlier, is going to be completely like just, just non existent compared to a wonderful Jun, Junmai Daiginjo, which we're going to get into in a little bit. We got a kanpai from Tony Perez. Come on. Come by, Tony. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, so this is a really, this is cool. This is available at the hardwood. We get back up and running. Cannot wait to get this into your glass. This is uh, a wonderful sake. And it's really great to have this down here at Quero. Like my idea was to introduce Quero to more than just another speed bar. And a huge part of this is sake and the reason people are probably wondering why i love sake so much i got introduced to it by some great friends for a company i work for and i just ended up having a really nice a great liking to it somebody i consider a mentor and, a, and tony my good friend me and him we uh, brian my buddy brian parsons man he just uh, i remember he trained me he started talking about sake and i just kind of made sense to me and just kind of went from there uh, i've been studying sake and practicing sake for quite some time now over two years i have recently received my WSET level three award in sake with distinction and so did and Tony as well and Brian there and so essentially we are for for lack of a better expression especially in the western world we are sake sommeliers and something that we are quite proud of and I am so happy to be able to share all this information with you we are cramming this all into a small segment so I mean forgive me for just rattling away and uh, kind of getting the jitters out kind of a rough start but it wouldn't be a virtual happy hour with us if it wasn't a rough start or for getting some glasses or hearing creakings of doors or hearing the sirens of the ambulances it just wouldn't be right so let's move on we all want to do next we all want to try some uh oh this is cool so this is a uh, gekikon this is actually the same thing gekikon we call these grenades you get these at HEB in Victoria or anywhere or any major city. But these are really cool because these are affordable and they have a lot of profile going on. This is going to be 15% alcohol. And I do, I do not believe that alcohol is added to this, which we're going to talk about. I think this is actually a June Mai. So check that out. This game comes with its own little cup. Glug, glug, glug. Look. Isn't that cute? Here you go, boys. Split that up. It's actually not bad. And that's five bucks for that grenade. So I recommend going for it, especially if that's all you see on the shelf. That's all you can really, and that's all you go for. Go for it. Get all these in the ice. So, yeah, so sake is something that has a tremendous amount of history. It's been brewed since the 1400s. It is so important to 
the culture, the Japanese culture. And it's like, you know, in the Western world, we drink wine, we drink beer, we drink hard liquor. But sake everywhere else is very important and it always will be important. And I'm so excited that you guys come into the hardwood. You know, always ask about sake. I love it when people come in and I don't have it and they're like, Ugh! they're frustrated because they just want to drink sake. I mean, you, you, it gets to a point where you start craving it. Like sake is, there's just so much heart into it. And when you try it, it just uh, warms your soul. It is so, it's so meticulous in the whole entire process. So the Toji's and the brewers, the Toji is the, the brewmaster, the Toji. When it gets to sake brewing season towards the end of the year, like everything from harvesting, growing and harvesting the rice, there's all different types of rice, of course. And then from there, they take it, all these, all these guys, they show up to the brewery, they pray together, they, they work together, they eat together, they bathe together, they sleep together, they wake up together, they work together, they brew together, and every day, every day, and it is so important, and it's just strictly about making the best brew they possibly can. And when you watch them work, you can... Uh, there's some documentaries on Netflix about it, for sure. I can't think of the name of it right now. Do you know what the... You had told me and I forgot. There's a... There's a when you look up a... There's a documentary on Netflix about brewing sake. And it's it's just like one. It's like Tenagawa, I think, is the brewery. And so... And when you watch it, at the towards the end, you're just like, I just cannot believe how much love and care somebody can put into making a product such as sake. And it's just something that we're not familiar with over in the West. I mean, we are. People are passionate. I'm passionate. You're passionate. Everybody's passionate about something. But you know, there's a, there's this expression that somebody making somebody making the birth of sake. The birth of sake. That's right. So please go check out the birth of sake. Get a vibe for what I'm trying to describe. But there's always been this expression: uh, somebody making the best thing possible in America. There's somebody in Japan making it ten times better. And it's most certainly has to do with this the commitment and care and, and just drive of the Japanese people and especially the brewers and it's something I admire and really appreciate so let's keep on going where are we at did I talk about the whole entire brewing process yet got to get the rice you got to brew the rice there's all kinds of all kinds of rice let's see what this this uh, these are the Jumai Ginjos we're gonna wait a little bit for that so let's go into Takobetsu Junmai. Cool, this will work. And uh, yeah, go Yakuman Goku. This is what this is, rice is made out of. And then I'm trying to see the Jamari Nashiki is an important rice too. Let's see if this one's made out of what? Go Yakuman Goku, of course. Go Yakuman Goku. It's pulling nothing but the same rice, Douglas. So Yakima Goku is a, it's an affordable rice, but there's like the most popular rice to brew with is something called Yamada Nishiki. It polishes really well. It doesn't break the, the grains of rice, don't break into little pieces. So the whole brewing process, it doesn't turn into, it has more control over it. So after they polish the rice, they put it in these giant hoppers and it starts in the top and it works down, it keeps on going. And it's just like a rock polisher. It's just polishing away the rice. And again, just keep on thinking about the rice that you eat. That's, that's how it gets white. It's just polishing it away. And the smaller the rice grain, the more the more high end and the more delicate the sake is going to be. Reason being is because all those amino acids that we talked about before that are left in the endosperm and the germ and the in the bran, it's all gonna be taken away. So it's just gonna be pure starch. And that starch, when we start a process called maromi, which is where we actually do everything from, well, maromi, I guess, technically is the entire fermentation process, but we have to, we have to cultivate our koji mold. And that koji mold has to be added to the steamed rice. And then after that, then it's going to be added to the vats with the water and the yeast. And it's going to be doing something called multi-parallel fermentation, which is unique to the sake brewing because the, 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 the koji is turning the starch into sugar. And then the sugar is being eaten by the yeast, which is turning alcohol. And then it is just, uh, so this one is going to be Takubetsu Jumai. Getting a little excited there. And takubetsu means special or high quality or grade. And the reason that this is, uh, this, the difference between a Junmai right here and the Junmai that we had here and then a Takubetsu Jumai is just saying that this is going to be a higher grade, uh, different process. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's like higher quality. It's more they, they use a special process to make the sake, I don't know exactly what it is for 
Tentaka, the Takabetsu Junmai, the Hawk in the Heavens. This is a wonderful bottle. It's affordable. This is 720 milliliters? Why did I forget my milliliters? What's the, what, are, what are these milliliters? 750. 750, right? For a wine bottle? Yeah. Yeah, 750. So <laughs> I'm like, why the hell can't I remember that? So this is quite affordable, and I know the sake very well, so I know what it's going, what's going to happen. We got a hello from Jesse Guerrero. Hey, Jesse, come by. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So this is going to have a tremendous amount of umami on the nose. So it leads me to believe it doesn't have a very low polishing rate, and then. It's super dry. This is going to be like, and that's something I, something I also should be telling you about these June mice. These are going to go really well with the diets that we have down here in South Texas. Go really well with smoked meats. Go really well with the cured meats, charcuteries, sweet fruits. Uh, go really well with anything doused in honey, like anything vinegar-based pickles. Like, honestly, it'll go great with anything. Sake is always just referred to around here as something you just take a shot of. Not the case. It is... Just, especially when it comes to seafood of any kind, sake, even on a molecular level, pairs better with, with seafood than any wine. It's, and a lot of it has to do with the umami that we're speaking of. It just pairs so well. Like, we have these snacks here. We have shrimp fries. And then we have, like, some, like, little bites. Like, you go, you, you go to a nice place that serves sake and knows their sake really well. When you order a sake, they'll give you little bites in front of it that they think are perfect to pair it with that sake. So this one would probably come with some dried fish, maybe... Um, Maybe a, a shrimp nigiri and maybe and maybe something else like maybe some squid or something like that and it would be really nice and play really well. It has that um, the tannin that just dries out your mouth as well because the alcohol content is pretty high. It's fifteen point six percent alcohol. So if you're if you like uh, darker like if you like your red wines and things like that, especially your cabs, this is a really good way to go. So in the brewing process, when you get to the maromi. It's just, a, it takes days to do this. And when it, the sin of the rice, we keep on talking about the sin of the rice, the shin paku, that just means white heart or the, the heart of the rice. And it, it, our white core has so many translations. I've heard it re referred to so many ways. That is the most important part of any piece of rice, which makes it the most important part of the entire brew. Because that is everything being turned into sugar that starts being turned into sugar again by the koji mold. And then the koji mold or the sugar that, that is now created, the yeast turning it into the alcohol that we need to make it sake. Sake, another thing about sake that a lot of people are misinformed about, which is totally okay. Um, you, you hear it a lot when like, somebody figures out that I love sake and I celebrate sake and I'm a steward of sake. And I, my goal is not to intimidate you with sake. My, my goal is to get you to drink sake. Like, so if, if all we have is Gekikon and then we have a Bud Light, if I can convince you to drink that Gekikon with me, I mean, my job, that, that, that brings me pure joy. And so I'd rather just be drinking sake, something fun, than drinking, if we're going to drink a, a mediocre beer, might as well just drink a mediocre sake. But with that said, sake has a very serious rule that it can only be made with certain, with certain items. And again, we talked about it earlier, and Junmai. And what makes Junmai is, again, rice, water, koji mold, and yeast. So if there's anything else that's added to it, it is no longer sake. So if you're like, oh my God, I love pineapple sake. It's like, oh, did you pour sake into pineapple juice? They make some drinks. It's like, no, uh, the, the Taiku pineapple sake. It's my favorite. It's like, technically, that is not sake. If you enjoy it, absolutely drink it. No, no one's stopping you. Like, sake cocktails are a, are definitely a hit. Sake, uh, sake based drinks are some of my favorites from going out. Lower in ABV, you're not going to get hammered, but at the same time, you're going to feel pretty good because sake has a very clean, very, very opulent buzz. Hey, opulence. So, we're going to get away from the Junmai, but I think the best way to get away from the Junmai is to do something. It will just totally dry out our palate in a fun way of drinking. Actually, I was going to say, surprise, for as dry as this one is, if you trill it, mm -hmm. there actually is quite a bit of sweetness to it. Yeah, no, for sure. Sake is always going to be on the sweeter side, but do not get that confused for like taking a shot of simple syrup. It's just going to have 
a, an extra, more sweetness to it. Trill it. That's what it's called. No, no, no. It's good. Oh, hey, everybody. I just want to say uh, thanks for Clover coming out and joining us. Tom, a.k.a. Tom, a.k.a. Uh, Tom is back. And then Morgan, a.k.a. Morgan, a.k.a. Morgan the Grouch is back with us. What's up? Cheers to you guys. Come by, come by, come by. Tom was gone forever. I didn't know if he was ever coming back. He just He just flew into Texas and came straight here, apparently. It's like, Jesus, don't you need to freaking unpack your bag or something? Oh, I did. I, I assumed you ran them off. He was gone forever. Tom's like, I'm going to go for a couple of, hey, I'm going. I'm like, all right, see you next week. I didn't say that. I was like, oh. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't live, in, I don't live here anymore or something like that. I was like, Jesus Christ. So, how's everybody doing out there? I'm so happy you are with us to talk about sake. I hope you're learning something. I hope that... Uh, Y'all are going over to my YouTube channel and watch all those videos and liking and subscribing. Because, again, we are going hard and heavy with the virtual happy hour. And we're trying to get on YouTube. You know why? Because why not? We're just trying to get freaking super rich and super drunk with YouTube. Just kidding. But please like and subscribe. Helps us out. Helps us get to a point where we can get this whole thing monetized. And please... Keep on supporting uh, the Virtual Happy Hour by sending us a tip at Doug Blank on Venmo. All the money goes directly into the Virtual Happy Hour, and it helps us fund the Virtual Happy Hour. So thank you, and thank you for keeping us in mind, and give us your money. We need it. So, as I digress, before I really interrupted myself, yeah, I didn't. I really did think I was five eight for the longest time. I mean, five ten. For years, for years, and uh, it wasn't. It wasn't in uh, uh, deceitful or you know. What I mean, I, I wasn't like yeah, I'm five ten. You know, what I mean, I I didn't know. Oh, and I want to thank Clover again. So for, I didn't know. We'll go back to that story in a little bit. So Clover showed me something. I've been drinking these damn bo juice box sakes for God dang knows how long. <laughs> God dang knows how long. So. This is uh, Oni Kuroshi. This is by Nihon Sakurai, which makes some really great brews. They make some pretty high-proof brews. They have a Namaginshu that we're going to talk about in a little bit. That's not going to be by them, but by somebody else. But, so, uh, Oni Kuroshi, as you can see right here, means demon killer. And back in the day when they were making the sake, they would say, this sake is so dry and so bad that it would kill a demon. But some of these brewers got together and like, what? Why don't we make it to where it's so good it would kill a demon? Totally changed the marketing ploy. So uh, Japanese culture likes delicate flavors. They don't like things. They don't like things uh, completely destroying their palate because they want to enjoy the, the nuance and subtleties of everything and all the craft that is put into making these things. But this uh, Oni Kuroshi, it's not really not that bold. It's just really dry, and so I think this would go really well for people that don't like sweet sakes, don't like sweet things. I brought a second one for you guys to divvy up. Cloveroni. Oh yeah, Clover. Clover doesn't know about the nicknames yet. Tom's, Tom's nickname's Tom. And Morgan's, well, I can't remember your other nickname. Oh, Timothy. Timothy. And then Morgan got his first nickname just a couple of weeks ago. Morgan the Grouch. Mm -hmm. So, and I just like that you smile when I tell you that. It makes me happy. It, so, it just seems appropriate. Indeed. So, this cute little juice box, do not give this to your children, people. Available at available at the hardwood. But yes, so dry. So dry it could kill a demon. 14% alcohol. Okay. Try to see that as a polish rate on there. So the polish rate that we keep on talking about. Virtually no sweetness. This is like perfect for somebody who wants to try a sake with no sweetness. So, may I be so bold to say it might be one note? Maybe. But it isn't tying together with that sweet. Sweetness is important, especially for sakes or any drinks, alcohol drinks, because it keeps the wheel turning. 
It's making sure that there's a perpetualness happening on your palate and that sugar is the glue that ties everything together. So this one to me is wonderful, right? Especially if you like dry, if you like dry drinks, if you don't like sweetness or in any way, I'd probably give him this drink or just suck it because he doesn't like, he didn't like any sugar apparently. But with that said, kind of one-sided, kind of like walking with like, uh, like your arms falling asleep, you know what I mean? On the palate. Is that, is that too weird? Are you going for a stranger joke? Or? No, I'm just going, or maybe, you know, like your foot fell asleep, <laughs> but on your tongue. But overall, great sake, and I recommend it. I recommend you guys come try it out. And again, the reason that I wanted to bring this one on is because of dryness. It would be a great introduction to give somebody a sake or a nihonshu is what we should probably keep on calling it. Uh, a nihonshu that we um, want somebody to really try and just try sake and be like, oh, I don't know why I had it once and it was it got me all messed up. It's like because the alcohol content's higher, and I'll tell you why. And they're like, oh, and then um, it was too sweet. I was like, this is perfect. For you. Mm -hmm. This is cool. It has these cute little demons all over it. I'm not going to say that's a tokuri right there because it looks like this. So yeah, I have, I have a whole collection of tokuris and chocos and and some rice holders and stuff. And it's just something that I've... Uh, you know, and I, and I have this whole thing with Japanese culture that I think... Because my generation, I'm 35. If you didn't know... 35. Tom with the squeaky door. So I have this whole thing about uh, our generation loving Japanese culture. Is that would, that's fair? What did you say? Like pretty fair. Yeah, right. Like it's, it just seems like uh, and there's like all these nicknames and stuff for it. Blah blah. blah. But like, but here's the thing. When I grew up, I got out of school. I'd go home. I watch TRL to watch corn kick ass on the freaking top 10 and wreck the number one spot with the uh, uh, got the life. And then you know what I do? I would tune over to Cartoon Network for Toonami. And you know what? Everything is just freaking taken from the 80s in Japan, brought over by a company called Funimation in Dallas, and they just dubbed everything over and re-released it for us American kids. So you get out of school, you're eating, uh, you go over to Cheeto's house and you're eating freaking enchiladas with saltine crackers. And the next thing you know, here comes freaking Dragon Ball Z, baby. And then like Hiroshi, the, the, and they're always eating like food, like all these, all these wonderful, like delights and, um, and drinking all these, these things. And it's like, what is all this? And so like, I feel like it was just like, um, incepted at a young age. And I mean, I was obsessed with Power Rangers. I loved the Power Rangers. I got grounded. So, and I found out the whole entire loophole of watching Power Rangers. It came on at five o'clock in the morning every day. And then I would go to school already knowing what happened. Everybody else was like, oh, I gotta go home and watch Power Rangers. Like, oh, so I guess you don't know that it airs at freaking five o'clock in the morning. And you know what came on before that at 4 30 in the morning? VR Troopers. Lame. I had to watch it. But, anyways, I do. I, I woke up to watch Power Rangers so much that I got. When I got in trouble, I was grounded from waking up early. Swear on the Funaguchi box. Swear. Wow. So, needless to say, I love Japanese culture. And there's a story that goes in with the whole entire... I talked about it on my podcast. I didn't see it, but I believe you. Uh, and uh, it's only one of my negative episodes. It was just me talking about a whole entire traumatic experience that I uh, witnessed with the Power Rangers and being a closet Power Ranger fan because apparently it wasn't cool to be a Power Rangers fan at St. Michael's and got picked on for it and I watched somebody stand up with pride end up being one of my best friends at, at, after all of this stand up with pride could he put the yellow ranger magnet on the side of his desk stood up and they picked on him and he just had his hell up high he just didn't care and it was I didn't stand up for him though so I, I still beat myself up for it uh, to this day but you know who you are and I stand with you. I'm a Power Rangers fan. Always have been. And I always will be. Now, what's the next sake? I'm pumped. Let's do some. Kikasui for the Gucci, baby. This is what, I mean, I just did a video of this. And it's on. Uh, <laughs> 
and it's on the internet. So please go to our YouTube channel and watch. And I am going to keep that video up. And I'm going to also put this one up, obviously, because I did not do this justice in the review. I kind of just said it tasted like mushrooms, which is fair and it's there. But there's so much more going on with this little can. And this is really fun to talk about because there's something really important going on with this can. So we just had a bunch of June Mice. I just looked at this whole stock. I have all these bottles. I'm like, June Mai, June Mai, June Mai. I'm like, I freaking blew it. And I got uh, Demon Slayer. Then I have this bad boy. So this is something that is will always be at the hardwood. This is something that is um, I'm very proud to have. Kikasui Funaguchi. This is brewed in Nagata. And it is one of my most prized possessions in my collection can you see right here clove er a little closer you want me to bring it yeah closer? bring it up so if you can see on that can it says nama genshu so this is not a junmai which you just had so many of it is not a demon slayer which you just had one of this is a nama genshu and it's also something called a hanjozo so remember junmai means strictly four ingredients water Rice, koji, yeast. Tom, actually, we put this in the cooler. Whatever, this big bad boy. Thank you, sir. So, in that process, sometimes the toji will want to, and it also goes deeper than just a toji. Like, this has to do with the actual tradition of sake and, and even the government being involved in, like, you know, it's, there's so many restrictions upon sake, even all the way down to the filtration. But if you're going to add another ingredient to sake and still have it considered, or to honjozo, I should say, excuse me, or not honjo, I blew it. That's, I blew it. To nihonshu, the one thing that you can add is a brewer's alcohol. And that's essentially the toji and the brewery make a distillate of a neutral grain or from anything really. And they will add it to the sake to not necessarily fortify it, but to help There's fortify so many reasons. It's not just to get you hammered. It's to pull any leftover flavors that really want to extract from the rice out of the sake. Maybe to bring the proof up a little bit, to dry it out, to make it more floral instead of sweet. And then also it um, helps with the yield. Excuse me. So sake is also past typically pasteurized twice. It is pasteurized and then put into the bottle and then pasteurize again. And that is to help it with shelf life and to last longer. So that's, that's your typical sake. This is a Nama Genshu. Nama means unpasteurized and Genshu means undiluted. So they didn't dilute it with water to bring the ABV down to get to that perfect delicate place where they want, that they want their brew to be for us to experience at home. And don't forget pasteurization, even in your milks and cheeses, it dulls the tone. If you try a raw cheese compared to a pasteurized cheese, take the same cheese. You pasteurize it and you eat it raw, vastly different. Two totally different things. Same thing goes for your sake and for your milks and for your brews, everything. And so this is, so is going to be unpasteurized. So it's a tremendous amount of flavor from that and undiluted. Holy God, there's going to be so much going on from there. Right? And then... Hanjozo. Hanjozo is the magic word on this can. Hanjozo means that brewer's alcohol that we just mentioned was added. Did I already say this? Probably. So the Hanjozo is just really there. The, it is, this is 19%. This is, a, this is a spicy boy. This will get your goat, if you know what I mean. But it's really just to pull all the flavors out from the, the rice. Just make sure they're getting everything. We talked about this on, uh, on World Rum Day. The higher proof rums, it's just, it's really, I mean, higher proof, yeah, it gets you hammered, but it's really just to make sure you're extracting as much flavor as possible from the sugar cane or molasses or whatever sugar cane or byproduct of sugar cane they're making the high proof with. It's not to get you hammered, it's to extract as much flavor as possible. Same with overproofed, or excuse me, not overproof, but with uh, with Honjozo's or, or uh, so Nihon Shoes, Sake Brews, that I have alcohol added to them. It's not to give you extra hammered, it's just to give you more flavor or dry it out, give you more floral notes. So with that said, this is a Junmai. So back to the Tozai, we talked from Junmai. If this said Junmai on it, it would that this simply would mean there's no alcohol added. If this said, if this Junmai said Hanjozo on it, 
it wouldn't make any sense because there's no such thing as a Junmai Hanjozo. Or that, and that simple as that. Junmai simply means no matter what bottle you see, if there's anything to take away from this. It can be a $500 bottle of sake. If it says Junmai on it, it simply means no distilled brewer's alcohol has been added to the brew. Now, if you did see a very expensive bottle of high-end sake, brewer's alcohol being added to it does not mean that it's a bad sake. It simply means they're adding an extra ingredient to create a flavor or profile that they just want to share with their with their with their clients, with their guests, with their with their with their customers. You know, and it's uh, very important. It's like, yeah. So so with that said, yeah, someone asking if you were still alive. I'm alive. No live like on Facebook. Bobby. Hey Bobby. Am I live? We're live. Yeah, we're live, buddy. And this is really fun. So it comes in a can. So in these packaging does not make it, it this is simply to protect the sake. This is makes it because they're sending it overseas. Vending machine cultures over in Japan are really important. So this is to block to, to protect it from the light. And just this is uh since it's unpasteurized and they stay cold the entire time, just keep it as cold as possible. And because you this this has a shelf life on it because it's not pasteurized. You pull this thing off, just like your grandpa did before we were born. I hope I don't cut anybody. One of my friends was drinking one of these sakes and put her hand down and it cut her damn fingers open. So be careful with those damn things. And now let's try one of my favorite canned sakes. Again, Kikasui is the brewery. Funaguchi is the name. And it's a Namagenshu Hanjozo. And here we go. And this is really important that I talk about this because, again, the YouTube video, I didn't give it the justice it deserved. I just uh, rambled and rambled and rambled. That was my first review. Forgive me. Honey, ripe banana, banana bread, if you will. Yogurt. If, you, if, if deep jewel tones could be a flavor, so like dark flowers, if you will. That makes sense. It's a little edit. Indeed. Apples. A lot of blossoms going on there. This is great sake, dude. This is fun. This is fun. And then again, that 19%, that 19 proof is bringing a lot of flavor out. So let's try it. Krill. Hey, Krill. I got it. No, I was saying, say the word. Trill. Trill. That's what that is. I should have said it earlier. Forgive me. I don't own a winery. Sorry. And know all the jargon. I'm just kidding. I didn't know the word drill. <laughs> I just blew it. Butterscotch. Banana. Banana bread. Everything, else, everything on the nose. Some yogurts. Some creams. Honey. Tremendous amount of honey. And dude, this. Take this. T take this to a BYOB. Or go to an Izakaya up in Austin. Go to Komori Tatsuya. Go to Loro. And you get yourself one of these, it will cut straight through any of those smoked meats. And it will just be such a reward and just such an experience. And you'd be like, why have I been drinking wine this entire time? But wine's good. That's all good. But no, it does have no they have their they have their they have their places. But of that's course. not why we're here today. That's not why we're here today. <laughs> and be sure to go check out Gulfrey's Winery. I insist. I'm actually wearing a Gulfrey's Winery hat in that video. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> and the, that video. Yeah. Tom, get this out of my face. Guys, again, all hail to Kikasui Funaguchi. Treat yourself. Available at any major city for sure. And again, there's something else I want to say. In these sakes, if you can't come to the hardwood, if you cannot come to the hardwood and try these sakes with me, and granted, we're not even open right now. We're still in lockdown. But still... Let me know where you're at. I'll, I'll find, I will personally search who carries it and I'll let you know. And if they can't, and if you can't get it, I will find it. And if you're, I mean, if it's a reasonable distance, I'll bring it to you. I swear. I mean, the farthest I'll go is, I want to say Nebraska. That's pretty far. That's How pretty far, far is that? 
I will drive if somebody. <laughs> I'll drive to Nebraska. You might have to help me out with the gas money, and you might have to actually buy the sake. But like, Venmo it to us. We'll play. We'll. Yeah. Jesse says that Fukumoto is also awesome. Fukumoto for sure. And then um, who else has a good? Who else has a good uh, sake selection? There's a lot. There's some really great sakes, and dude, Austin is uh, just amazing for their sake selection. Fifteen and a half hours. <sighs> all right, we'll do it. I'll do it. I swear. We'll do the whole trip, all of us. We'll I'll do it. Hey, if you want to, if you if you're in Nebraska, and you can't find it. You got to help us pay for the trip. That is a contingency, but we will do it. And actually, believe it or not, the grocery store in Port Aransas has a much better sake selection than I would initially guess. The gas station? Uh, the grocery store. The oh. CGA. Oh yeah, we went. Yeah, it actually had a lot more sake than I would have. Yeah, because I was kind of freaking out. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, go let's, let's keep on moving. This is going to go over an hour, just so you know. I apologize to nobody because this is freaking awesome. So next thing we get into is something called Nagori. Y'all, if y'all have had sake in a... Uh, if, if you are one of the persons that I've met that's like, I love sake, I only drink unfiltered sake, this is what you're talking about. And Or if you say you just truly enjoy unfiltered sake, this is what we're talking about. Nagori. And I love Nagori too. It's typically on the sweeter side. It has a lot delicate mouthfeel. This is actually a very, very, very old way of brewing. The clear sakes that we have that are like water white, it's really interesting because that's, that's, that's more of a modern... Mo Excuse me, modern marvel in the world of sake. <gasps> Excuse me. And they do this whole entire filtration process. With this sake, we're going to talk a little bit about filtration. We're not going to get too deep into uh, how it really works necessarily, but we're going to you know, touch here and there. So, again, all sake has to be filtered. That is a rule of making sake. So, even though this is cloudy and it does have rice mash in there, it was filtered. It could be a charcoal filter with a loose grain, or it could be, it, they do take these big bags, and they let them drip, they do these drip filtrations, and they'll take the first part of the drip, and whatever's left in there is like the finest of the sake, they'll put it to the side. <coughs> Excuse me, they'll keep on going. But if you wanna do nigori, they'll take some of that rice mash and they'll add it back to the brew, and give it that nice cloudy texture. And again, this is a very old way of drinking sake, and it is, um, this is a tokubai, this is a Tokubetsu Junmai. Of course, I guess I had a bunch of Junmai. So why am I choking? Uh, it says it's complex. It's creamy, complex, and fruity. I am quite familiar with Dreamy Clouds. Uh, this is uh, Rahaku Nagori Sake. This is from Rahaku Sake Brewery. And this is something that I have been serving for years. When I was over at uh, Kamari, we, this is uh, definitely one of our biggest sellers. So we're going to go ahead and pour this out. May I have a wine glass? Typically, this would be served in um, a four-ounce glass, like a that's shaped more like this, or even like this, but like we would clear. And sometimes you'll see it served in a wooden box. That wooden box is actually called a masu, M-A-S-U, which is a very efficient way of measuring rice. But they just use that to. Uh, there's this whole thing. I, I got I got tied into it. That the whole idea because they overpour the the sake and it spills over to the box. I always thought from when I first started, I heard through the grapevine, it was a sign of generosity or pro prosperity. That's not even really the case. It's really, they're like, just want to make sure they're showing their guests. And I get ripped off. There's plenty of sake in there. And also, it makes it easier to carry to your guest. I don't have any mossy boxes, but they're cool. So you want to gently agitate. You don't want to, you don't want to shake this up. Just be nice and polite. Treat the sake with respect. A tremendous amount of respect is put in to creating this bottle. So, another th thing in sake is it is, it is not polite to pour your own glass. These guys are just over here watching me pour my own glass over and over again. Here you go, Clover. Just right here. No, it's just, it's bad. Get off that bowl. You go ahead, go ahead. Nope, pour. Labels out, bud. It's all good. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, Clover. It doesn't matter. I never talk to Clover about bottle service. It's not a big deal at all. So, no, it is a big deal, actually. I mean, you never, you never, um, 
a server would never just hand the bottle over and be like, here, pour it yourself. You know, you pour everybody the first glass. Then from there, the host typically pours the glasses. It's just a sign of uh, respect and just, you know, appreciate you being here with me, you know, and I care that you're here with me. So give it a nice uh, swirly do. You can tell, you see, just a totally different experience than what we've been having so far. Tremendous, like you can already tell this is gonna have a different texture. Cookies and cream, man, all over the place. White flowers, it smells pink, that's possible. My ears ringing. Yeah, it is definitely complex, it says it's complex. I love it, I love it when you read the profile of the bottle. It's like, what are you gonna get from this? It's like creamy, complex, fruity. It's like, oh, okay, well, I mean, fair enough. So this would not be clear, water white, and colorless. This would be very cloudy. Yeah, I mean, it's really not that sweet, but it, it has a bigger texture. It's, a, it's more pronounced mouthfeel, of course, because all that rice mash is put back into the bottle and the, the, the filtration process. And it's, um, it's elegant and it's, um, just a refined thing, but most sake is gonna have the, the whole entire expression of elegant and refined. If you ever wanted to experience that in a drink, or like, what does that mean when they say it's elegant and refined? Just try sake. It is elegant, it is refined. And that's why a lot of people fall flat with sake, because they think that it just doesn't have much flavors in it. There's a tremendous amount of nuances, a tremendous amount of delicacies, and, and delicate and delicate um, tones to sake. You just have to be patient and let the sake tell you what, it, what it's doing. And that's why another reason why I love it so much. Actually, not very sweet at all, and it's uh, pretty quite dry. It's uh, yeah, it's a um, it's floral. It's definitely floral. Yeah, it's nice. But this is um this is a June Mai, so no alcohol's been added to this. Let's keep going. Put that back on ice. So I'm really excited that we're gonna finally get it. So you know we have another freaking June Mai, Taco Betsu June Mai. We've had, we had a hundred of them, so I guess this is our June Mai happy hour. Frick. We're about to get into another June Mai. But this June Mai is different because it is a different grade of June Mai. So, polishing rate. I told you we'd come back to the polishing rate. And here we go. I will need one of those glasses. Thank you. Woo! Thanks, sir. Tom, I'm happy you're back, buddy. Always polish your glasses. So this is really great. This is Bride of the Fox. This is um, a Junmai Ginjo. So we're getting into a totally different classification now. We all know what Junmai means. Junmai means no alcohol has been added. So there's only four ingredients to this bad boy. But it's a Ginjo. If you have Junmai, you have every, you have all the information about the process of how it's brewed. But now you have Ginjo. Ginjo, once that word Ginjo is placed into the label that instantly tells you that the polishing rate is 50% or lower. Meaning that the whole polishing process, it kept on going to the point that 50% of the rice remains. So we got rid of all the, the husk, the germ, the uh, endosperm, all those amino acids that we talked about that, that build all these tremendous umamis and all these deep flavors and savory tones. We potentially just knocked all that away in the polishing this takes about 50 hours to get to this point sometimes even longer and so it's a it's a very delicate process and also this is rice think of how big a grain of rice is you know and if you like think about like scotch or you think about whiskey like the corn grains and the barley they're not polishing this stuff they're just pretty much throwing it out there getting this sprout stopping it and then taking it from there this is like a whole entire process of delicacy and so <laughs> i think it's of a 50 percent polishing rate which i believe this is just 50 percent not just 50 percent that's quite impressive if you think about it tony brings up also morocco style hold your horses tony you better believe that i got something with morocco style on there come on man <laughs> he got me he thought he got me but he didn't peace there is just stones my friend i can't i'm so excited that you're still here okay so brian the fox 
I believe this is 50%. Typically, when it has a Ginjo style, when it talks about the polishing rate, it will be on the bottle. It's not, I don't, I'm almost certain that this is a 50%. So 50% Ginjo style. Well, yeah, because the thing is, the weird thing, because there's another category we're going to go into after this that is very strange. Well, because it takes die Ginjo, where we're about to get to. But a Ginjo, all it has to do is polish to 50 or less. So you can even get lower. So whatever, let's keep on moving. These are going to have more delicate flavors. It's going to have more, but not necessarily in the sense of like profile. It's just more like, instead of being like soy and, and meat broths and, and all these umamis that we're talking about, we got, we're essentially took those away. So it's going to be more tropical notes, like more melons, more pineapple, fresh creams, white flowers, uh, peaches, pears, and you know, so let's see what happens. And so this is about, my hands been all over it. I had it on the ice. This is probably about 50 degrees, which is, I think it's perfect for a Daiginjo, I mean for a Ginjo style. Ginjo styles, you would never, ever, ever serve warm. Chilled or cold, depending, you know, the, the kind of the rule applies, drink how you will, but when it comes to a Ginjo style, if you came into the restaurant or if you came to the hardwood bed, I really want some warm sake, but like, I'm sorry, all I have are Ginjo styles. What does that mean? I told you everything I told you. Like, yeah, can I try it warm? It's like, absolutely not. Not because you, it, it will just, it just turns into, it just turns into a really bad experience for everybody involved. And there, I highly doubt anybody would want to, that. I would be shocked if somebody tried a warm Ginjo and be like, I'd rather have a warm Ginjo than a warm Jumai any day. Won't happen. Not a, unless you just eat poop for breakfast. It's not happening. So I don't know why I'm, I'm not, I've never had this argument with anybody before. I'm just arguing with myself right now. So anyways, let's get in here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I, I put the ball down. Sorry. So this is again, Bri the Fox. I believe this is, I got introduced to this, um, at the ramen shops. I believe this is on the ramen shop menus <coughs> at, uh, Sia group. And then, uh, so there's like a, a white pepper. It's the first thing that hits me. Most certainly a pineapple, melon. Maybe some lemongrass is in there. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much just your typical uh, uh, Junmai Ginjo style because it does have a little bit of funk to it as well. You know what I mean? Kind of like a ripeness to it. And I think that a lot of that has to do with it not having, it not being Hanjozo. Like a Hanjozo would actually probably tame that down. And if you can see, there's pretty. If you look at the the legs on that bad boy, stick it to the side of the glass. It's, it's pretty high in alcohol, so I'd say I'm going to say this is 17 percent, 18 percent, 16.5. It's pretty high up there. Tony says Bride of the Fox is Moroccan style. Check the color. I've got these damn green lights behind me. You get me? Is it? Oh yeah, I guess so. I see it. All right. My my apologies, Tony. So I was going to talk about Morocco style in a little bit, and I'm going to hold off on that. So Brian the Fox is a Morocco style. I apologize, Tony. I guess shame on me for having a sake tasting in green lights. <laughs> what? Like typically when you, uh, when you look at your sakes, you want to make sure that you have it in, in natural light against like a white background if, if possible. So yeah, so shame on me. I apologize. I shouldn't have done that. We should probably have done this outside with the white background. I'm sorry, guys. There's a storm coming in, and I like the green lights. Y'all say they look good. It's all your fault. It's Morgan's fault. No, it's kidding. It's Not, always my fault. It's always Morgan's fault. And people wonder why I'm a brush. So, so Morocco style. We are going to talk about that in a little bit, and like we're getting there pretty quick. Go ahead and, uh, so yeah, this is like, so all those big, big pronounced flavors, but not in the sense again of the umami, but more in the sense of like tropical notes are all there. It's peppery. I love that. Okay. So get this out of my face. We are going to need two more wine glasses. I'll get drink those. Fixer. 
Give me the big blue. Give me the whole white. Give me the whole. Give me the whole thing. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Yeah! Thank you, sir. And of course, what better way to move on than with another June Mai? So I really wanted us to do like a Ginjo style, so you guys could see the difference between Ginjo and June Mai Dai Ginjo in the sense of me trying it and being able to tell you about it. Um, so again, this is no alcohol is added to this. There is this whole cliche. There's a there's a a lot of people that claim that Jumai Ginjo styles are the best anyways because they don't like alcohol being added to the brews. But I don't agree. I think that some some of my favorite um, some of my favorite Dai Ginjo style Ginjo styles are going to have are be, going to be Hanjozo. So anyways, but this is from Kikasui, and if you guys remember what we were talking about earlier, we were talking about Kikasui. With the, the Futaguchi, with these guys. But this is their Jumai Ginjo style. And this is a wonderful bottle. Look how beautiful it is. It just, I mean, like, if you shop by labels, that is a label to go by. That is just absolutely stunning. And I just, every time, these are like one of the brands that I see if they like put something on the internet. I'm like, oh my God, I share it on my Instagram story because I just love this brewery so much. Again, from Nagata, this is a Jumai Ginjo style. I believe the polishing rate is just going to be at 50%. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's just dive right in. It's that first one, that last Ginjo, uh, of course, sushi. I mean, any, any, any sake is going to go well with any fish. Absolutely. No questions. But that last one would go really well with anything fatty, anything spicy. And I'm almost certain this one will as well. Because of, of those, um, those fruit forward flavor, flavors, those equator flavors, those bananas, those, um, those, those ripe fruits. Those young apples all over your palate. When you when you eat something spicy, it just really helps create a wonderful experience. So, boy, up. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys to eat a shamase. I wanted to say eat a shamase when we started this. Eat a shamase. That's it. That means uh, welcome. And you yell it when you walk into a lot of Japanese restaurants. Cool. So let's go into this. There used to be a place, or they're still there. Actually, uh, congratulations to uh, Kind of Tropical. I guess one uh, one of the best bars, or restaurants in Austin. But I remember before they went through a they went through a little bit of a change. But before they did, they actually had the Kikasui Jumai Ginjo in in, in three hundred milliliter formats, and I used to love going there and enjoying them. So let's get let's open this bad boy up. Bad girl, bad sake, bad person, whatever. Zim day. Zim day. I'm all about it. Woo! Man, so I can already tell you that this one is going to be, in my personal opinion, much better than Pride of the Fox. Pride of the Fox had some safe, some uh, some funkiness going on. And it's probably from the Morocco that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Fresh. This is just like fresh and crisp. And it has, of course, melons, fresh creams. And that's like one of my favorite things to um, to find in a high quality sake or a ginjo style is the fresh creams. It's just like like peaches and cream, if you will. Not like not like oh you're gonna eat a big old thing of Greek yogurt, but more like oh dude, like this is like an amazing uh, savory dessert, if you will. Peaches, there's a uh, mint. Dude, I, I mean, it's so funny. Maybe because we were talking about dill earlier when we were talking about aqua beat, but I'm even getting a dill expression and stuff. Oh, got a little drag race going on. I hope somebody wins. So that's pretty cool, though. I mean, those guys that do, try, drive those, we ride by the highway, so if y'all can hear that, there's a lot of zooming and booming going by. The thing is, those guys, I guess they put a lot of money and effort, and that's their passion, is to drive those cars. So, I mean, more power to them. Why not? Bye, Clover. It was nice seeing you. Ooh. And he's going to watch the drag race. You mean the camera? Yeah. Yeah, so wonderful expression of Jumai Ginjo style. And I, I can't wait for you to pour this to a glass for you guys at the hardwood. And if not, again, if you want to try any of these sakes, please leave a comment. This will also be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Please check that out. Like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and Leave a comment there too as well, and we will help you get these bottles. I will do whatever it takes. My 
My experience has been the best way to get somebody to try sake is to give it to them. Like just be there with them and explain to them the experience they're having. Because a lot of times you just can't put it into words. It just takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of effort. Again, me, I've been doing it for going uh, a little bit over three years now. And so, and it's something I'm quite grateful for. It's changed my life. This brew, this whole entire experience of sake has made me the uh, a better person in so many ways. I have grown as a human in all types of ways and a lot of it has to do with sake and the people i've met through sake a lot of inner growth a lot of looking myself in the mirror and i am humbled by nihon shu so with that said we are going to move on to our last bottle so the next bottle kind of uh, comes hand in hand with me a lot of people have know, know me for the for how much I love this bottle. When I worked at Kamuri, this was like my number one seller. If anybody wanted to try a sake, I didn't care who you were, how hard you tried. I was making you try this next bottle. I do need one more wine glass for this bad boy. Wine glass? Wine glass? Yeah, I need one more. Thanks, sir. So, this is a uh, beautiful bottle. Everything from the way it's made to the whole entire pasteurization process to just the people that make this brew, the Born Brewery. This is Born Gold. And if you know me, you know how important this bottle is to me. So this is a Junmai Dai Ginjo. I'm so excited to give you guys another Ginjo style. I mean, a Junmai style. What? I don't know. I was going to ask for ice bucket if you are done with it. No, not yet. We want to keep this as cold as possible. So you want to treat these, you know, these these ginjo styles. You want to keep them as cold as possible. These, this is uh, obviously for those who know me. This is my favorite bottle. Uh, this is uh, something that I will probably, if I were to be buried, I'll be buried with. Cremate me, please, and burn this with me for sure. Like, like that watermelon from earlier. Get it going. Say, hey, will you, uh, will you do me a solid? Will you pull that, check on that watermelon, see how much farther it's gone down? I'm going to bring it back out. I'm going to remind them what we did with our futushu. Futushu, again, our table sake. So, this born gold. This is a Junmai Daiginjo Moroka. So, Moroka is a filter, is essentially means it has a touch of age to it. it. There's some Morocas that are aged for a couple of years, and they taste freaking wild. I mean, like, robust and full of, like, like meat broths. Almost like something that you were, like, almost like a cooking wine. Yeah. Oh, more than it, worse than it could go on. Anything happening? Like Let's show these guys. So this is what we're doing. We're trying to get this Gekikon to feed this bottle. Can you feed, what's that called? Spiking. Watermelon, trying to spike. I guess I should have got a bigger watermelon, but we are gonna do a video in the next couple of days about us cutting that open and see what happens. So we'll keep you keep you going with that. Keeping it classy. Yeah, so that's a Futushu. And so that was, uh, that was the lowest. This is to the highest. Go ahead. Oh, Tony wanted to know, does it have a mighty flavor? <laughs> so, Tony, I, there is a bottle over here that I have called Drunken Well that I decided not to bring in. And I would say it's pretty mighty. So, we have Born Gold. This is, my, this is like something I will probably get you know, tattooed on me one day. I just love this bottle so much. First time I tried it, it was just a wonderful experience. So you can't really tell because again the green lights. I apologize. Actually, nah, let's not do it. So let's go in there again. There's this beautiful golden color, which it gets its name from, and it actually that's what the the beautiful label is matched after. the 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 president of the company is just, he's this extremely charismatic guy. He um, is just like this wonderful expression. He like wants to make really interesting, really exciting sakes as well. So the Maroka <coughs> essentially just means aged sake, which is not rare but you don't see it well i guess it is rare in this in the grand scheme of things and it's like something that you don't see quite often and aged sake i mean it is a it's it's totally different than drinking an aged wine uh most sakes you want to drink as fresh as possible once they're open they have a very short shelf life so you just want to power through your sake and enjoy it as much as possible quite delicate but this one is like i can't i, I can't i'm talking about it let's just get in there so again, this is available at the hardwood, sold by the bottle. Get the 
that swirl. Let's put it up to that camera. Can you see it? God, that stupid green. Why did I? I love the green, but why did I do that? The gold is coming out. I think the green's complimenting you. Oh well, well, that's not. I, I appreciate you saying that, but that's not necessarily how you would judge uh, sake. Okay. So, with that said, it's uh, it has a beautiful golden golden hue to it. It's clear. It's water white. Definitely not colorless. It has some gold. It has some amber. It has some goldenness going on to it. And so let's go ahead and get in here. Woo boy! And so this is only pasteurized once. Remember, like when it's less pasteurized, more flavors are going on. It's pasteurized while it's in the bottle. Tony is saying that Morocco does not mean aged. What does it mean? Oh, what does it, it mean, Tony? Was it filtration? Oh, Kosho is uh, aged. I blew it. You're right. Morocco, Morocco is a type of filtration. Got me. Got me good. No, that's a good call out. Kosho is uh, aged. Right, Tony? Did he say anything? No, we're waiting on a response. This is so embarrassing. But anyways, well, forgive me. So. Says, yeah, bingo. Michael, Michael Phillips says bingo. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm sorry. I just got my words mixed up. Honestly, I swear. So, with that said, forgive me. I will make it up to y'all somehow, some way, some form, for some fashion. So, back to it. This is so embarrassing. Okay, so Morocco is a type of filtration. I understand that. Okay, I knew that. And I just want to go ahead and add out there, Koshu is an aged sake. I don't have any, and I forgive again. I am so sorry. So, shame on me. Uh, take some points off the board. Just let me keep my pin. My, we all have these cool W set pins. Pretty cool. No big deal. Obviously, I didn't deserve mine with all that with all that misinformation. But so let's get in here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Jesse's just now realizing Brian and Michael are here. Hey, Jesse, yeah, the whole family's back together. The band's getting back together. All of us work together at Kamari Tatsuya. Uh, so that is going to be pronounced. It is going to have a tremendous amount of fresh fruits. Uh, White peach is the thing I get the most. Banana gets tied into this a lot. Most certainly has that. You know when we juice those pineapples, you know those pineapples are nice and like, oh my God, like is this thing falling apart because it's so uh, orange? Like what's that color that comes through? That orange is yellow. That, that, that sensation's happening. The cream that I look for in a, in a daiginjo. Oh, so a daiginjo, a daiginjo, so we had a ginjo style that we had first, which is 50% polish. So 40% or lower is referred to as dye ginjo. And any aromatics, that you, and that's like pretty much the highest rating you can put upon one. I actually even have a bottle over here called the Psy 23. Is it the Psy 23? The, the Psy 45. Oh, it's a 45. So oh. never mind. I thought I had the Psy 23 for some reason. I, I don't. But anyway, so the polishing rate gets, uh, the polish rate, the lower it gets, once it gets past 40 is going to uh, all be Dai Ginjo, but it's still a Ginjo style sake. And they refer to the aromatics and the flavors of these sakes as Ginjo Ka. And so everything that we're getting from these past two, our past three sakes are technically referred to as Ginjo Ka. J-I-N-G-O, Douglas. J-G-I-N-J-O, I might be kind of drunk. So forget it's a possibility. It. So, and then space ka k a guys. Let's get in here. Brian says he wants the pin back. Come get it, baby. So I know this stuff. I'm just guys. I don't know this or not, but I know this stuff. Y'all know me. I know you. So yeah, cream. Uh, it's actually quite robust, but not like, again, like not to be confused for, it is a June Mai, so there's no, it's not a Hanjozo, so there's no alcohol added to it. So the proof is not, there's not a bunch of uh, alcohol on the palate. But it's definitely, guys, you can definitely get it. But it's, um, it's lush. It has, the, those creams I'm looking for, it has the, the, the 
the peach is more like peach board than it would be like the apples and stuff they were talking about from earlier. I, I grew up in a flower shop, so it does have this like white flower element to it that um, I'm familiar with. Uh, it doesn't have any funk to it whatsoever. Yeah, so I swear to you, I love this bottle. I know I just butchered it all up. And, I, and I'm just so honored that all my fellow WSET level award level three winners are here to uh, realize I've been messing uh, a lot of these things up. But kind of knock the, knock the rust off. You know, that's what this is all about. So with that said, Born Gold, my favorite bottle of all time. Uh, I'm sure that will change throughout the years because there's so many more sockets to try. You guys have no idea how many, I mean, you probably do. You think how many beers there are in America? Think about, there's so many sakes on this planet, even being brewed in America, all different types, all different types of strategies, different types of techniques. And it's just so much passion, so much love, so much creativity, and just so much honor and pride goes into making these bottles that you all got to see today. And I just love my collection and I really want you guys to come and check them out again if you need help getting these bottles let us know follow us on YouTube but I want to say I am grateful that this is a part of my life it has again changed me in so many ways and the people that I have met through sake is something I can never ever ever trade in for anything else on the planet you know maybe some other things maybe like you know like you know success fame fortune no i'm just kidding so i just want you guys to know that i am uh here to help you out with all your sake needs even though i'm telling you wrong i'm happy to be corrected always learning always trying always refreshing always getting it done and with that said thank you guys so much please give us a tip over on venmo like and subscribe share this video and help us keep this alive come pie